Stop. Stop the damn. Det er jo vigtigt at sætte ord på, hvordan vi har det indeni, så ikke det håber så. Hello everybody, I'm Marta Baga, we are here with Scandinavian Films, and today we're celebrating the Shift short film uh, shown at the festival. And welcome, Amalie Marie and Charlie, it's very nice to see you here. You made it through the rain, you braved the storm, <laughs> we're very, very grateful. Uh, and now I hope you can tell us a little bit more about this wonderful little thing that you created together, and, and how did it happen, what it is that you found interesting about the characters, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get into their very strange relationship a little bit later on, but let's just start from the beginning. Well, the story is inspired uh, by some feelings I had when I was young, because I grew up without a father, and I was really close to a lot of teachers and soccer trainers and male characters in my life. Um, and I always um, was felt really abandoned and when they when the relationship had to stop because I had to change class or uh, change soccer team. So um, that's where the story began, began for me, was to um, try to look, look into these mixed feelings of having a um, relationship to a character in your life. You're mirroring yourself so much into and projecting a lot of feelings. So that's what it began for me. Yeah. It always feels like the end of the world when you're younger and somebody leaves. It's normal, we should get used to it, but I think it's, it's just, sometimes you just can't do it. And how did you talk about that, that realization that the person that she really cares for is just going to be gone? When we first talked about it, the script, um, I also could see myself in what uh, Amelia has experienced with the, with the male characters in, in your life because I, I could see myself in that also with like a soccer, um, uh, what's soccer it called? Trainer. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, teachers I've looked a lot up to that I have to, uh, to walk away from or they had to walk away from, from me. So yeah, I just knew what she meant immediately because I've experienced it. It's like a dream when you find a collaborator who just gets it yeah. and you don't have to explain too much. Yeah. We're also a little bit frightened at first when we yeah. met each other yeah. because like, we have so many things in common, it's yeah. scary. Yeah. <laughs> but a really, really great start of a, a company and a, a, a friendship as well. But what I, uh, it actually makes me feel, think about the film a little bit because they don't really talk, they just know. Yeah. They can understand each other. They can understand when the feelings change and when, when something is maybe becomes a little bit tricky and difficult. Yeah. But was it, was it hard to express it when acting? Because you, you are not given those massive monologues. You really had to yeah. show it through your eyes. Yes and no. I think, it's, of course, it's difficult to express feelings without saying something. But at the same time, it just it was very natural just to when I had to be, be angry, act angry, without saying anything, that's almost easier than to be like, I'm very angry with you, than just to be in the feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but it was difficult, but at the same time, almost easier than having to have a lot of dialogue about being angry and uh, sad and all of those <laughs> feelings. I think I understand it. I think, I think all the therapists are suggesting that we should just talk about our feelings and then it just sounds ridiculous. It's true. It's true. But uh, there's a lot of mystery about your character. Like you don't really know that much about her. You don't know why she's there. You don't know why she's angry. Uh, do you know? Did you talk about the beginnings? Well, yeah, we did. We did talk about like... Um, what Milo went through before she was going to this place and with her family and with her father and but but it it's just something that we know and then the <laughs> the audience can think about what they they want it to be in short you're not going to find it out uh, you just have to imagine and maybe one day you're going to you're going to decide to reveal a little bit more <laughs> but is it is it fun for you to have this little secret just the two of you and then you show on the set and you know 
you know more about her, but it doesn't have to be in the story. When you're portraying a character, you're portraying a, a real human, and our story are very, very long, but you're only gonna show this. So for me, it's just a really natural thing uh, that, of course, the character has a background story and a future story, and we know so much about it. So I would not say it's a, a secret, actually, because also a lot of from the team knows what <laughs> what <laughs> happened before and why. And to call them. Yeah. To call everybody now. Um, but I think it was important for me, or it wasn't necessary for me to tell everything, because in that way, hopefully, people will put something of themselves into the character. And that's where the imagination starts, because you have to uh, do some of the puzzles yourself. And I think that's where I... What I really love about film, that's when they're not telling me everything, because in that way I have to give some of myself into the film. It does, and I think it just, it just shows that, that you trust the people who are going to see it. Yeah, exactly. That they're going to be ready to maybe do the work and then think yeah. about it a little bit. Yeah. But I'm wondering now, given that you had this amazing bond, which is quite rare, it's rare to be working with somebody who just gets you, I guess. Uh, do you think you're going to do something together again in the future? Feature, maybe? Hopefully. I think yeah. that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, but nothing planned right now. But uh, when you think about stories that you would like to tell, mm -hmm. like what's on your mind now? Because I get that you want to show something true mm -hmm. about the characters, about human beings in general. But uh, like what kind of stories? Maybe about women who are deemed difficult. And as you said, angry, because I think there is still a bit of a hesitation when it comes to those kind of characters. Like people just don't want to see them, maybe they don't understand them. Maybe it's time to change that. I think I'm always interested in boundaries. I've been worked a lot with boundaries in different ways and relationships where who are in a gray area in a way where it's not yeah, complex uh, relationships, I think find that really interesting. So I guess that that would be a thing for me to discover more. But actually, when we made Svartau, or The Shift, um, I did a lot of research, and there were so many things. Uh, all of my notes, I still have them, and actually I started up a project um, which just got some money. So now I have to write a bit. It's not going to be similar to Svartau, but it has some of the same themes and maybe some air, uh, arenas that are close to something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm still in that area as well. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Hopefully this festival is going to maybe make something happen. Uh, I mean, we just see all those meetings happening around us, so who knows. But I'm curious, when you were uh, looking for your protagonist, did you have like very clear ideas about her or, or were, you, were you keeping it open, waiting for somebody to come through the door and maybe just bring this extra element? I would say we did a casting process, but I knew who Anna was before she knew me and uh, because I saw her in another short film. And um, so I've been actually looking at her and while we were writing it, I had, this sounds really romantic, I know it's not always like this, but when we wrote the story, I kind of had Anna's face in my head. So uh, I knew, I said to the caster, I have to have her, have her into the casting. And then you, you wanted to come and it was a match. <laughs> yeah, so it's, a, it's really a, a fairy tale kind of story. It's not always like that. No, it's <laughs> but, not, it's not. Yeah. But People are going to get uh, wrong ideas about exactly. filmmaking, but it's actually wonderful yeah. when it does happen. Yeah. But isn't it scary? I'm just wondering, because when you have this face in your head and then God forbid, it doesn't work out. Like, how do you move on from that? You just, you just didn't believe that it's not going to be. I had a feeling that we could work on most of the things. Um, and I think for a director, you kind of have to, this must not sound <laughs> um, bad, but you have to crush a little bit on, on your uh, characters. You have to want to see more of them, want more and want to explore them in a way. Um, not in a relationship, sexual, anything way, but you have to uh, be fascinated. And I think I was really fascinated about Anna and I was like, I want to see more. 
and that inspires me <laughs> to and and I inspired the story and inspired me and in that way it's a full circle kind of thing. I love how you're just sitting and smiling and saying like yes, yes I inspired you, yes that's what happened. But um, this is a very contained story, like uh, they just feel so close together all the time, one room, very little space, almost claustrophobic. Why did you want it to be like that? Because I wanted, through the format and the way we shot it, I wanted to um, to portray the um, the capturedness that Milo feels. Mm -hmm. So it was also a yeah a way of portraying that because Milo is feeling trapped um, in the home where they live. Mm -hmm. And those uh, scenes when your character is just looking, you know, at the mirror and just, just, it's hard to say what it is that she exactly sees in there or, or what kind of change happens throughout the story. How did you talk about those scenes and what, what was going on through your head maybe? Just a lot of being in the feelings, I don't know. Um... I was wondering about those scenes because it's almost like she's looking for herself by looking, you know, at this reflection. I was wondering if, uh, if, if you wanted to kind of suggest that maybe, maybe she's getting closer to finally finding about that the real mirror self. Scenes yeah. where ah, she looks right. into the mirror. Milo are mirroring uh, themselves into Nikki. The and so the mirroring thing is um, it's an ongoing thing in the film. Mm -hmm. Also, like it's, there's a lot of reflections as well, and it's been um, we worked a lot with that. It's it's a little bit like like. Uh, I don't want to say a crush, but sometimes you're so fascinated with people that you just want to be like them a little bit. And it's a very, it's a very weird emotion because it doesn't have to be sexual, it doesn't have to be a love affair. There is just, there is just this fascination, it's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was wondering if you did any research about those relationships between kids like that and, you know, and their guardians or teachers. Did you talk to anybody who, who had this, oh, you did? Yeah, a lot, a lot of them, yeah, uh, actually. And what do they tell you? Like, does it does it get harder for them? Because you do, you do start to develop feelings. Uh, you do start to care for for one another. And then, I mean, sometimes yes, you just have to go. I think the film wants to ask the question, like, are the or also ask the question, are the system reproducing um, some of the abandonness that the kids felt or feeling? Um, but we don't have the answer of that uh, because it's different from one person to another but all of the people we talked to the only thing they had in common was that these relationships are getting close to you and you're feeling a lot of things but all of them tried at least one time that losing that person and I know it's an arena where that especially happens, but it's also a very universal feeling that a lot of people can relate to because we all, most of us, know the feeling of having someone really close, but knowing that this is not forever. Um, so we wanted to uh, make a comment to the system and portray an arena, but we also wanted to uh, work with something really universal. In the film, I just felt, I just felt warmth there as well. Mm. And was it important for you to kind of have it at the same time? Yeah, I think it was really important that the audience uh, are feeling Milo and Niki's relationship uh, and understand why they're close. Also because both of them are non-verbal, so it's really physical and it's um, play, they're playing a lot with each other, and that was really important. Um, and also because he's really seeing Milo um, and seeing what she's going through. Uh, and that's really important as well because everybody, it's important for a lot of us to be seen, feel seen. We, we all want to be seen. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And uh, I'm just very happy that you're here with this film and then so happy that so many people will see it. It's, you know, it's this special edition coming back to life. So. I just, I just hope that you, you're gonna maybe make many people happy and make them feel like they are seen. Who knows? Thank you. Thank you so and thank much. you so much for being with us.
again today. I hope tomorrow it's not going to be raining anymore. Maybe then we're going to go out. Who knows? <laughs>